W123 Coupe has a shortened wheelbase and a lower roof line, so it's more of a compact car. It was a particularly attractive vehicle and stylish with all the windows down and the sunroof open, and you pretty well nearly got a convertible car then, and they were pretty well loaded up with all the extras you could have, the leather interiors, the ABS brakes, the air conditioning systems, uh, very attractive to the United States market, where they had even the turbo or diesel versions over there. It was an expensive, exclusive model, and I think that gets confused among 123s, where people think of a, a W123 saloon as being a Beirut taxi. A coupe was never that sort of car. You know, it was a much more expensive and exclusive car. Coupe has always been the rarest, and uh, probably around about 7% of total sales were coupes. The saloon cars started at a basic entry-level vehicle, which would be a 200, a four-cylinder car, and that car was around about six thousand, seven thousand pounds sterling in in the late seventies. But the coupe started at around about eleven thousand pounds. And if you wanted a top of the range car, two eighty, it went on and on, and you could build as many extras as you wanted. It could be three times the price of a saloon car. Restoration of coupes has become of more interest as the cars have gone up in value, and they really have. In the last two or three years, they've doubled and trebled in value, and it's extremely difficult to find good ones now, and the restoration of them is expensive, and it is difficult. I mean, I've been restoring for more than 30 years, and there's still difficulties with it. There are very few parts in the cabin of a coupe that are similar to a saloon. The doors are different, the chrome trims are different, even the mirrors are different. It does share the same engines, but the exhausts are different, everything, everything on a coupe, even the petrol filler cap is, is completely different to a saloon. The availability of parts is not good anymore, so the restoration of them is expensive and extremely difficult, which is why the value of really good low mileage ones and ones that have been restored has rocketed up over the last couple of years. I think the golden rule in buying a coupe, or if you're interested in looking for a coupe, is you must buy the very, very best you can or leave them alone. Really good W123 coupes are far rarer than some very expensive sports cars like Pagodas and 300s and sports cars from the 60s. You can find them anywhere. You can buy a classic car magazine. If you want a Pagoda SL, there's, there's as many as you want there. But to find a really beautiful coupe in either original mint condition, low mileage or fully restored is extremely difficult. And that is one of the reasons that's pushing the values of them up now. This particular 280C is a late one, very highly optioned. It's got leather, it's got the sunroof, it's got full electric windows, which I don't necessarily think you really had as a standard. Now we've got air conditioning, which is you know very rare on UK market cars. You could pay almost as much again in options, I think, as you pay for the actual car. Um, and there was a, a lot of different things you could have on it. Um, I think the only thing that you've not got on this one is the two-tone town and country horns, which is very rare because I don't think I've ever seen them on anything else. Somebody who was buying a, a W123 Coupe, a 230 or a 280 MCE, um, was looking at it as a long-term purchase, I suppose. It was probably going to keep it longer. One of the reasons being because it cost more, probably couldn't afford to replace it as often. I've had the car for 30 years, and what's not to like about this, this model W123 280C Coupe? Everywhere I go, people stop and say, love your car, in traffic jams, when people are next to you, love your car, how old is it, do you want to sell it? And it's a, just a nice car to drive. Until you've driven one, one doesn't realise how nice it is to drive. I have a bit of a weakness for classic Mercedes cars. I really do like them, and I really do like the convertibles. Uh, and I've been lucky enough to, to own some of those. Um, However, you know, here in London, where the weather isn't always great, to have a convertible, which I'd have to park on the road, is not ideal. So when I was looking for a car, I thought, what gets me close to having a convertible experience whilst actually having a closed car? So then I, um, I looked at, the, uh, at this coupe with the pillarless feature, which means, you know, you really open it up, as you can see now. And then if on top of it, you open the windows, then you really do feel like you've got the wind in your hair, if you have any hair. You've only got to look at the numbers you still see on the road compared to anything else and still being used as daily cars compared to anything else. And um, you, you just said it all really, they're, they're still there and they're still being used and still be there for a long time to come. They're almost too good to be a classic car. Some of the, the, the funny classic cars is the fact that they're not, they're not competent, whereas these are almost, almost too competent <laughs> to be a classic car, um, which, is, which is a good thing, obviously. Yeah. 
What makes the 123 model more desirable as a classic than anything else is it is better than anything else. It is simply the truth. The previous coupe models and all the saloon cars with fuel injection are extremely complex to service and they need specialist maintenance and very short service intervals. Most of them have got greasing points on them and they need 3,000 mile interval service. W123s don't need that. And in comparison with the later cars that came after the 123, all those vehicles have electronic engine management systems which now are all failing and nobody can repair them and makes the cars worthless. So 123 sits in that strange era of cars which are superbly mechanically designed but didn't have any electronics in them. So the later cars now, as nice as they are, they are problematic that can't be fixed by hardly anyone. Even the main Mercedes dealers can't supply parts for them anymore. And the 123 sits there alone, it's supremely reliable as long as it's properly maintained. And so that makes the value of a 123 and the collectability very even more desirable.